Hey everybody, we are live here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. Today we have the brand director of bourbons here at Buffalo Trace Distillery, Joshua Steely. Joshua's gonna talk a little bit about William LaRue Weller. He'll touch on the man himself and also the award-winning bourbon that bears his name. Welcome. Thanks. Um, guys, welcome. Welcome to Weller Wednesday. Uh, this is a great day. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to cover off on our beloved Weller brand. As you can see, we had this amazing lineup in front of us. Definitely not a bad way to spend a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so we have some whiskey to get through. I think we'll make it. But before we get into the whiskey, let's talk a little bit about you know the history of the brand, the man himself, uh, and what makes you know the brand special. So you know the brand starts with the man himself, William Larue Weller. He was born in Larue County, Kentucky, in 1825. As a young man, he goes off and fights in the Mexican-American War in the 1840s. He then comes back and settles down in Louisville, Kentucky, where he starts his own you know, liquor wholesale business, W.L. Weller & Sons, in 1849. So he quickly developed a, a, a great reputation. You have to remember, this is a time when there was a lot of bad whiskey in the marketplace. Consumers didn't know where their whiskey came from, who made it. Uh, there was just a lot of bad whiskey. And so if you were doing it, uh, the right way you were noticed and he used this slogan honest whiskey at an honest price uh, and it certainly resonated with people um, he then uh, continued to grow the business and by the 1860s he had gotten into the distillation business himself so not only was he a wholesaler but he was also distilling some whiskey himself and uh, this is when he was uh, credited with being the first to market and sell a weeded bourbon Something that was very different for the time, he used wheat in the bourbon recipe instead of rye. Obviously, this is something that still holds true today. We'll talk more about that. Um, and it's still fairly unique for our industry today as well. Um, you fast forward another decade or two, in the 1890s, his business continues to grow. He hires a young Julian Van Winkle to be his Midwest Territory sales rep um, in 1893. So 1893, Julian Van Winkle starts at uh, W.L. Weller & Sons. Um, not too many years after that, uh, William LaRue would pass away, and young Julian, along with some other business partners, would end up um, taking over the company and managing W.L. Weller & Sons moving forward. Um, you fast forward another decade or two, on Derby Day of 1935, um, the, uh, uh, Julian Van Winkle and his business partners open up Stitzel Weller Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, at this distillery, this now infamous distillery, they would uh, go on to make weeded bourbon. They would make the Weller brand and other weeded bourbon brands uh, in the similar style that William LaRue Weller had started uh, a few decades prior. So they continued his legacy on. Um, uh, W.L. Weller, the brand would grow on to, uh, to become a, a pretty prominent brand in the 50s and 60s. Um, and, and then into the 70s, as people stopped drinking as much bourbon, they ran into some trouble. The distillery ended up closing down. Uh, the brands were then sold off to different companies, and our company uh, bought the, the Weller brand in the 1990s, and we started making um, Weller here at Buffalo Trace Distillery in the 1990s. Um, fun fact, we also uh, did a partnership with the Van Winkle family just a couple years after that, and so we also started making the Van Winkle brand as well here. So really long and interesting and rich history uh, from, uh, you know, from the Weller brand. Uh, interconnected with the Van Winkle brand, you know, a brand that so many people, you know, uh, have heard of and love as well. And so the brands kind of grew up together and started together. Uh, they went their separate ways for a couple of decades and now they're sort of back together at Buffalo Trace Distillery. But uh, so that's a little bit, a, a little bit of history uh, on, on Weller. Uh, today, you know, the, I think that we, we try to continue that legacy of honest whiskey and honest price. I think we still live up to that billing. Um, but, you know, I think the, the, the Weller brand has sort of moved beyond that as well. You know, it's this beautiful, refined uh, whiskey, which we're going to dive into in here in just a minute. Um, but it's also award-winning brand at Buffalo Trace Distillery, which is the world's most award-winning distillery. And so we're really proud of the work uh, that, you know, Harlan and his team do in making this magnificent whiskey. And I can't wait to sort of dive in and taste it with y'all. Yeah, that's great, Joshua. It's Certainly a rich history and, and quite the legacy that Buffalo Trace is carrying on here today. So, you know, we've got people from all over tuning in as usual. We've got Alaska, California. We've got Joseph from Western Pennsylvania. So, you know, Joshua, one thing that 
a lot of people ask about and a lot of, what a lot of people want to know is what is the difference between Weller and Pappy? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question and, and one we get a lot. Um, uh, frankly, Weller and Van Winkle sort of start out life the exact same way. It's the exact same we did bourbon mash bill uh, in both and so we you know the, the whiskey goes into the barrel the exact same way the same liquid goes into the barrels um, and really the, the differences are uh, that some of the Van Winkle expressions tend to be just a bit older so that we just age those longer so that's the big difference but the mash bill is exactly the same and I think that's contributed uh, to some of the growth and popularity of the brand of the Weller brand over time and that and that tight connection so it's a really close connection to this day, not only from a brand standpoint and history standpoint, but also from the whiskey and the liquid itself. Uh, it's the exact same we did bourbon mash bill, so there's no difference. Uh, and, um, and, you know, obviously uh, we're going to taste them in just a second and talk a little more about that. Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned the growth. I mean, it's clear that over the last five years or so, people have really taken to, to Weller bourbon. What do you think is driving that growth? I think uh, word is out. You know, I think uh, is one of these brands that was, you know, for a long time, it, it, uh, it was probably a bit of a regional brand in the, you know, 80s and 90s. You know, um, many folks that might live in the Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area probably had grandfathers that used to drink Weller. Um, but uh, I think, you know, now the, the brand obviously has moved beyond that. And, and we, you know, we, we pretty much send it to all 50 states and, you know, a couple other countries. But... I think the word has gotten out on how good the whiskey is, and we've won a lot of awards over the last several years, uh, which we're proud of. And so I think it really has to do with that. And it's a, you know, I think in bourbon, everyone loves a great story, and you know, the Weller brand has just an amazing, rich history and, and great story. And so I, I don't think that hurts as well. All right, what do you say we get to it? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's taste some whiskey. So uh, as we're diving into this, let's just talk about what makes Weller different. We we touched on it a little bit, but you know. When you think about our, our portfolio here at Buffalo Trace Distillery, we make a lot of great whiskeys, a lot of great brands. Um, but, you know, Weller is special for a couple of reasons. Really, it starts with the weeded mash bill. It, it's different. Um, there's no rye in it. Most bourbon, you know, in the, you know, most bourbon period is, is our rye bourbons, meaning uh, a lot of corn. Rye is typically the second or flavoring grain and then a little bit of malted barley. Uh, so most bourbon are rye bourbons but you know this one's different there's no rye in it at all wheat is a secondary or flavoring grain uh, and why is that important well wheat gives off a different flavor characteristic so it's it's softer and milder and what that does to the whiskey is it creates a softer sweeter some would say smoother whiskey you know versus a rye bourbon and a lot of people like that um, you're not really when you taste it you're not really tasting the wheat you're tasting the absence of rye and what that does is it allows the sweet aromatics, those beautiful vanillas and caramels from the wood sugars of the wood uh, to be more front and center. And you know, people just really enjoy that. So that's a big difference. Um, our master distiller would also say that wheat is very, not only is it a softer, milder grain, but it's a stronger grain. It can stand up to sitting in a barrel for a long period of time. Uh, and so it ages really well. And that's why some of our weeded bourbons are some of our oldest bourbons, you know, here at Buffalo Trace Distillery. Um, but then the other difference is also the way we distill it and, and put it in the barrel. There's a lower, we, we do a lower distillation proof when we make weed, our weed to bourbon mash bill. Um, so that's important because the lower distillation proof uh, allows more of the characteristics from the grain to be left in the spirit. Um, and then we're going to put it into the barrel to lower entry proof, 114 proof versus our standard of 125 proof on our other bourbons and rye whiskeys that we make. Uh, and that, you know, once again contributes to that softer uh, flavor, but also helps, I think, with the, with the uh, that softer mouth feel and, and and the finish that you have, and that that's a signature of the Weller brand. So, so enough talking, let's get to tasting. So we're going to start over here with our Weller Special Reserve. This is, you know, this is the core of the lineup. This is where it all starts, and so, um, uh, you know, as we go through this, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the differences here, but it really starts a Weller Special Reserve. It's the one that's been around. Uh, this is sort of the entry into the brand. Uh, this is a, you know, seven years, give or take, a seven-year-old whiskey that uh, obviously is the same weed bourbon mash bill we've been talking about. It's 90 proof. Um, and when you taste this, you're going to taste what Weller's all about. It's, it's the sweet aromatics front and center. So as you smell it, it's Caramel, vanilla, it, it, it's, you know, this light honey note. 
and you're going to get a lot of the same stuff on the palate. So let's just taste it. Mm. Honey, just just you know, light caramel, vanilla, honey, a, a little bit of cherry, and a, and a touch of spearmint on that, and. It's just so easy, and the thing, you know, when I think about Special Reserve, it's really popular because it's, um, it's, it's really easy. It's not very abrasive at all. It's really easy for people that are newer into bourbon. So when people ask me, hey, I'm newer to bourbon, what should I try? Well, our Special Reserve is one of the first things I say because it's so soft and sweet, and people just tend to like it. But it's also nuanced and complex and interesting enough for people who have been in a bourbon for a long time. So. It's, a, it's certainly a crowd pleaser. It's you know, great in cocktails. It's very versatile and 90 proof. It's, you know, it's not too, too big or powerful. Uh, so it's just a great introduction to the lineup. Uh, so let's move on to number two. So now we're gonna move over to uh, the most recent addition to the Weller family, Weller Single Barrel. Um, and you know, really what makes this difference, similar age, seven years, give or take, same weed to bourbon mash bill, a little bit more proof, so 97 proof. So uh, when you think about bourbon, uh, a little proof goes a long way. It's gonna create a different experience. Um, but the biggest difference here that proves a, a, a pretty big point of differentiation versus special reserve, but the single barrel is sort of the fun part of this bourbon. Um, when you have a single barrel bourbon, you're bottling one barrel at a time, and each barrel has its own characteristic, its own fingerprint, uh, the wood came from different places and imparts a different flavor. So the fun thing here is that not every bottle of Weller Single bar Barrel is going to taste exactly the same. And that's the fun part of Single Barrel Bourbons, whether you're talking about Weller Single Barrel or Blanton's or you know, some of our other Single Barrel offerings. So um, I think you'll see a difference on the color uh, just from the increase in proof. A little more on the nose, a little like richer caramel flavor, um, sort of note on the nose. It's like a caramel chew. It's, um, it's thicker, thicker mouthfeel, longer finish, uh, and just because there's less water added to it, you know, so all the flavors are a little more pronounced. So beautiful, amazing, fun whiskey. That was good. Uh, so let's move on to our third whiskey. And so real quick as we're going through this, when you're doing a lineup of tasting like this, there are a lot of ways you can do it. Uh, the, way, the way we decided to do it today was just really kind of go low proof to high proof. These, these first four are gonna be the same age, seven years, give or take, um, low, but we're going low proof to high proof. And then we start going older. So eight years, 12 years, 12 plus years. So, uh, and then within these older, we're also getting higher proof as we, as we move along to the end. So, you know, you can do it low proof to high proof. You can do it young to old. You can do it, uh, we only have one mash bill here, but if you had multiple mash bills, you could do least amount of rye to most amount of rye. So that it, it's kind of a fun way to think about how you want to set up a tasting, but those are some ways I would consider doing it. So our Weller Antique 107, same weeded bourbon mash bill, uh, seven years old. Um, but this is the big difference between, you know, this one and this one is the proof. Uh, so we're going from 90 proof of special reserve to 107 proof on our Antique 107. Now we're getting, you know, less water in it, much, uh, just a bigger whiskey bigger mouthfeel, longer finish, bigger, bolder flavors. And get on the nose. I mean, that, that whiskey lets you know it's there, right? A little more, you know, a little more boldness and, and bigness to it, a little more alcohol on it. Um, it's a fan favorite. Well, Joshua, you kind of touched on it, but what, why is it important when you're tasting bourbon to start with a, with a lower proof and work your way up? Um, yeah, I think it, 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 it helps because if you go straight right to the highest proof offering in a lineup, then, you know, you could fatigue your palate. You know, the, you know there's obviously a lot more alcohol in that. It could sort of numb or dull the taste buds. And so if I go from here to Special Reserve, I mean, the spe you're not going to be able to fully appreciate the special reserve for what it is because you've you sort of fatigued your palate, you know, on the on the, the higher proof option, and so um, I, I think it's a, it's it's 
much more fun to go low proof to high proof in that sense, just because you can pick up more nuances. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, um, well, our full proof. This is, this was just introduced a couple years ago and it's quickly become a fan favorite. Um, you guys can see on the color of this thing. So this is, once again, this is 114 proof. Same weedy bird mash bill, seven years old. Big difference here is proof. And let me tell you, it makes a world of difference. 114 proof versus 90 where we started. Completely different whiskey experience. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's so flavorful. Um, somebody who, who had never, you know, really had bourbon before, it, they, this not, might not be the thing that they want to go to first. You know, it, it, it could be so big. But people who, who have developed a taste for, for whiskey and great bourbon, uh, this becomes a fan favorite. And so just on the nose, uh, I, 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 now I'm starting, when you get this higher proof, you start picking up new, new notes. And so I get, I get dark chocolate on it, which I haven't really had on the ones I've, I've tasted before. Hmm. Right off the bat, dark chocolate covered caramel. I mean, just dark, dark chocolate. Um, that caramel still there. We talked about that's a, that's a hallmark of the Weller. And then I still taste it, you know, 30 seconds later, I still taste it. It, it sort of coats the mouth. The mouth feel uh, and the finish is something that I think separates Weller from a lot of other bourbons. So uh, that's, that's one of my favorite aspects of it. And of course, full proof is, uh, it foregoes chill filtration. So um, as a non-chill filtered bourbon, what does, that, what does that bring to this full proof? Yeah, so, it's, uh, um, so we don't chill filter it. Most bourbons are chill filtered and you do it because, uh, so you cool the, the bourbon down and then run through a filtration process. And you know, all bourbon has to be filtered a bit because as it sits in the, in the barrel, you know, you get uh, sort of the, the remnants of the charred barrel and in the char, you know, left in the whiskey. So you want some sort of filtration but a lot of people really like the bourbon in its sort of purest form. And, uh, and when you do a non-chill filtration, you're not cooling it. It leaves a lot of the, the esters and the fatty acids in the spirit. So that gives it body and a lot of people think more flavor. Uh, so it's just a um, sort of a more nat bourbon that's more natural or raw state in a sense. And, and um, you know, it, I think it just adds to the ex overall experience. So that is a fun aspect of the foolproof. And we call it the full proof, 114 proof, as you guys remember, um, that's the, the proof at which it goes into the barrel. So we'll put the spirit, the new make uh, weeded mash bill in the barrel at 114 proof. Uh, we then don't touch it for years. We said seven years. It'll generally, for us, it'll go down in proof initially, and then over time it increases in proof. And, and it'll, um, over you know five or six years later, uh, certainly seven and plus years later, it's typically the barrels at a much higher proof or maybe not much, but a higher proof than when we put it into the barrel. And so um, on this, you know, these barrels are typically, you know, somewhere in the 118 proof, give or take, seven years later. And so we add very little water to this full proof. We just add a little bit of water to get it back down to 114. And so it's, it's really close to, uh, the, you know, to the, the state it is coming right out of the barrel. So now we're gonna start going up in age. Uh, so the first four have been seven years old. Uh, now we're going to go to Weller CYPB or Craft Your Perfect Bourbon. So we did this fun experiment with uh, a couple years ago. We created a website. It was basically a bourbon education website where people could go on and, and craft their perfect bourbon, build their perfect bourbon. They could pick, you know, the mash bill and the age and where it aged in the in the warehouse. Um, and uh, we had about 200,000 people do it, so we had a lot of data points. And we, we looked at the data, and people picked uh, weeded bourbon aged for eight years on the top floors of the warehouse but in bottle between 90 and 100 proof. And so we thought to ourselves, well, you know, we could, we could release something like that. So that would be, it's a weeded bourbon mash bill, so that would be a Weller. Um, so this is an eight-year-old weeded bourbon um, at 95 proof aged for eight years on the, on the top floors of the warehouse. And frankly, uh, all the people who did that created a fantastic whiskey. So people knew what they were doing. Uh, the results are great. And uh, it's been a lot of fun for us to see the acclaim that came from this and 
um, you know, being able to release it was, was a lot of fun for us. And it actually won, uh, just won a big award, you know, uh, it was uh, in the World Whiskey Awards, Weller CYPB was named uh, the world's best bourbon. And so uh, it, was, it was great to see what was just like a fun educational thing for us actually turn into uh, a really fantastic whiskey. Um, and so as you're talking about CYPB and the whiskey itself uh, versus where we started on Special Reserve, same weed bourbon mash bill, but a little more age, a little more proof, um, and on the top floors of the warehouse, meaning it's aging at a, a more accelerated pace, uh, it's gonna just drive a little more Weller flavor, you know, and, and, and creates a fantastic whiskey. Mm. So it's funny, you, you can taste the difference on the age on that right off the bat. A, a little more oak flavor, uh, a touch more dryness, and you know the fruity notes that you get in the bourbon starts to get a little darker. Uh, so you go from, you know, like a red cherry to a dark cherry in a sense. Uh, uh, you know, getting into the fig space like that. But a fantastic whiskey and something that's really fun for us. Now let's move over to Weller 12. So Weller 12 years has been around since the early 2000s, and uh, it's a it's a fan favorite. Clearly, this is a, a whiskey. Now we're starting to when you think about the difference between Weller 12 and Special Reserve, same Weedy Bird mash bill, same proof. Both are 90 proof. The only difference is the age, seven years versus 12. Uh, we said a little proof goes a long way. Well, a little age goes a long way in bourbon as well. And so uh, that extra five years in a barrel creates a, a, a deeper, darker, more complex whiskey. And that's why, you know, this is one of the you know, most award-winning whiskeys we have in our portfolio. Uh, it's a, it's, um, it's a, it's a personal favorite of mine, and, and I know a, a favorite of the folks that work here at Buffalo Trace Distillery. So, let's give it a taste. I mean, the complexity is unbelievable, um, especially for not being that high proof. Um, that age really drives up complexity, drives nuanced taste. Uh, a lot more dryness, more oak, um, you know, you start to get some peppery notes in it, uh, different fruits show up. Uh, There's still that, that vanilla and caramel is still there, but instead of, um, you know, sort of a, fr a fresh vanilla bean, it's more of like a creme brulee type of vanilla flavor uh, over time. And so, uh, a beautiful whiskey, and um, mm, that's good. So, we're ready for the finale here. Um, this last one is William LaRue Weller. It's part of our Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. So this is a release. Uh, the Antique Collection is a, you know, sort of a release we do once a year. It's a collection of five whiskeys that we think are sort of some of our, you know, best foot forward, sort of a showcase for the distillery. And this is part of that collection. Obviously named after the man himself, William LaRue Weller. Um, this is that same Weedy Bourbon mash bill, um, but this is brought to you at barrel proof, 12 plus years old. So this. You know, we've talked about full proof, how we dialed up a lot of flavor via proof. On 12 year, we dialed up the flavor via age. On William LaRue Weller, we're pulling both of those levers. So we have proof and age. And the result is, um, is you know, really a special, a special whiskey. Um, our master sailor in Harlem, I've heard him say, anything you want out of a bourbon is in this bottle right here. I can tell you that right now. So this one, this is our 2018 release that we're tasting today. Uh, 125.7 proof. So we talked about the proof changes. Uh, we started at 114 in that barrel, and you know this collection of barrels ended up being 125.7 after it sat in the warehouses for 12 plus years. And you think about that aspect. This is really the beautiful thing about American whiskey and bourbon is that uh, these are time capsules in a bottle. You know this, these um, this was released in 2017, and so the whiskey in this bottle went into the barrel in 2005. Think about, think about how much we all changed from 2005 to 2017. You know, we had a lot of um, maturation going on in our own lives. Well, this whiskey had the same maturation, but um, this is, uh, um, you know, what we think is, uh, really showcases kind of what we do and what the Weller brand can be all about. So I'm, um, I'm gonna just sort of end here. Um, are there any questions? Yes, we have a question from Marla. Marla asks, 
Why only make it that proof? Why not stronger? On the William Rue Weller? Yep. Well, this is the this is barrel proof. So when we went open and um, sort of took the bung out of these barrels 12 years later, uh, that's what the that's the proof of the whiskey in that barrel ended up being 125.7. So we didn't add any water to it at all. So you can always bring proof down by adding water, but you can't make it higher proof than it is. That um, you know that's father time and mother nature's job. Uh, so so they did that job well there. Great. So so Joshua, what is the difference between a, a foolproof bourbon and a and a barrel proof bourbon like we've got with William Larue Weller? Yeah, foolproof. Uh, uh, the foolproof as we as we sort of define it here, um, you know, here is the this is foolproof is um, the same proof as the entry proof. So that 114 proof is the same proof as the spirit that went into the barrel when it went in. Barrel proof is whatever proof that whiskey is at the end of its journey. So the difference is the proof at the start of the journey versus at the end of the journey. And um, sometimes they're really close, sometimes they're a little further apart. By the way, I just tasted this William Lee Weller two minutes ago. I still taste it. Like that's the magic of that bourbon, that long finish, unbelievably long finish. It's, uh, it's truly a special whiskey. That's great. Well, well, Joshua, you know, everyone wants to know, um, when can I find some? So, I mean, always a great time to talk about this big expansion we've got going on right now as we speak out here at Buffalo Trace. Yeah, uh, we know we know that uh, some of these bottles that sit in front of me are harder to find than we would like them to be, and uh, the problem with is that there's no microwave, you know, for this stuff. This is a crock pot business, and it takes years and years for these uh, whiskeys to develop and mature and be ready to sell. And so, as we talked about, you know, there's a 12-year lag between when we make it to when we can sell it, um, and so. We are in the midst of a $1.2 billion expansion here at Buffalo Trace Distiller. We're you know, doubling capacity um, every step of the process. So we're making a lot more weller these days than we did you know, years ago. Um, it just takes time. And so we're doing the best we can, uh, catching up. And we, we completely understand. And, and uh, you guys stay patient and keep drinking uh, great whiskey because it'll be coming. All right, folks, that's, that's about all we have time for today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks to Joshua for talking a little bit about William LaRue Weller and Weller Bourbon. We'll be here next week, same time, same place, 2 p.m. here at Buffalo Trace Distillery. See you then.